and part 11 of Sunnah of the Prophet. So we continue with prophetic statements from the content of prophetic hadith. B. Statements of the Prophet. Prophetic statements are divided into five categories. And we continue on part six. Statements about rituals. These are the hadiths, these are the ahadiths, plural. A shair, a hadith shair, Muhammad's instructions compromising his messengerhood on how to perform the ritual obligations of the book. Believers of Muhammad's message have to obey his orders. Their adherence to them is what we have called combined obedience. Seven, statements about unseen world. These are the hadith al akhbar bil ghayb, Muhammad's speculations about the unseen world. Because of the fact that he, as a prophet, had no special knowledge about the unseen world, it would be improper for us to take his words as truth. Like every human being, he could only believe in the existence of the unseen world and like every human being, could only confirm things of the unseen world if they became empirically perceptible. For example, by scientific research. If such things had not been sufficiently researched, he, like everyone else, had to rely on what the book says about it. Moreover, since the things of the unseen world are part of the ontological reality of the cosmos, they are above and beyond the sphere of Iman and hence, strictly speaking, not in Muhammad's area of expertise. Number eight, statements about legal injunction. These are the ahadith al-ahkam, which compromise every legal injunction and every piece of legislation that Muhammad issued. They are in strict compliance with the verses of the book and between the limits that Allah has set. They are, as we have pointed out, only informative for us since as orders of his time, they show us how Muhammad applied the divine injunctions to the contingent social and political problems that he faced in ancient Arabia. His statements have no, have non for non normative value for us because they merely reflect his activities as a mujtahid who responded to the to the needs of his time and who applied ruling that the objective conditions of his society made necessary due to their historical contingency our ijtihads may con may considerably deviate from his ijtihads even if this does not diminish our love for the prophet muhammad number nine sacred statements this category refers traditionally to the Ahadith al qudsiya about the unseen world, which as, as the name indicates, were thought to be inspired by divine revelation. However, we cannot accept them as sacred or divine for the same reason as given for the Ahadith al akhbar bil ghayb Muhammad as a prophet simply could not have spoken such words, as his knowledge of the unseen world amounted basically to nothing. Moreover, we reject this existence of such sacred states because these imply that the book was in some way ambiguous or needed further elaboration or additional explanation. A note. A hadith qudsi is according to the so-called ulama, uh, ulama al-Quran scholars defined as a saying of, the, of God that was spoken through the medium of the Prophet. It is also called Wahi Ghair Matlu, non recited revelation. In order to distinguish it from Wahi Matlu, recited revelation, which is the Quran. While the Quran is the actual words of Allah verbatim, a hadith would see contain God's message expressed in the words of the Prophet. The Quran enjoys at least theoretically superior status due to, to several theological and hadith-specific considerations. For example, due to the fact that the Quran was narrated through tawatur, multilateral chains of transmission, while the hadith qudsiya was narrated only by khabar wahid, solitary chain of transmission. 
The fact that the Islamic tradition acknowledges the existence of divine revelation outside the cover of the Quran, the covers of the Quran, is unacceptable as it opens up the possibility of divine inspirations that are expressed in human words. A possibility too close to the claims of sanctity of Islamic fiqh that we want to combat. We believe that if Allah had necessarily thought it necessary to add explanations, He would have given them within the book. This was, of course, not necessary as we hear in the following two verses. Shall I seek for judge other than God when He... It is who has sent unto you the book explained in detail. Mufassalan. Surah Al-An'am 6 verse 140. And if the apostle were to invent, an, invent any saying in our name, we should certainly seize him by his right hand and we should certainly then cut off the artery of his heart. Al-Hakka 69 verse 44 to 46. From the second verse taken from Surah Al-Haqqa, we realize that fabricating lives about Allah includes words of defamation and slander as well as words of praise and glorification. But even if these fabrications contain praise and glorification, they still remain spurious words put into the mouth of Allah. Even if positive and well-intended, they are still fabrications for which Allah punishment is as we hear in 69 verse 46 very severe god forbid that the prophet might have done such a thing and number 10 personal statements these are the hadith of hayat al-insani which covers the sayings about muhammad's personal life his eating and his sleeping habits his favorite pastimes his way of dressing speaking traveling walking running, hunting, and so on. They also include his kindness, good-naturedness, tolerance, courage, and his feelings about justice and injustice, truth and falsehood, hardship and welfare, and so forth. We hear and thoroughly absorb all these uh, biographical details of Muhammad's daily private and public life so that, is, so that our souls are polished, our spirits uplifted, and our virtues strengthened but we deny the legitimacy but we deny the legitimacy of turning such personal matters into normative behavior to be emulated by everyone on this planet at all times and throughout every period of time and place in the conclusion the aim of this series has been to solve one of the most complex problems of his Islamic history. That is to define the form and essence of the Sunnah of the Prophet. We have demonstrated that it, it is necessary to place the Sunnah into the epistemological, cultural, and political context of 7th century Arabia. We show that we living in the 21st century must be critical of the Sunnah's contingent and context-bound nature as well as of formulations and definitions of the Sunnah that Islamic fiqh invented during the 7th to 9th century. We have made it clear that Muhammad bin Abdullah was a human being. What made him different was his reception of the divine revelation. As we hear in verse 110 of Surah Al-Kahf Al say, I am but a man like yourselves, but the inspiration wahi has came to me. Al-Kahf 18, verse 110. Revelation came down to Muhammad complete in form and content, which means that he delivered it to his people exactly as he heard it. His great mission was to make it public, that is, to unhide what was hidden and to make clear what was unclear. On this, we hear the book, and remember God took a covenant from the people of the book, to make it known and clear to mankind and not to hide it. Al-Imran 3 verse 187. Through his transmission of the divine text, and here we compare Muhammad to a conductor transmitting, transmitting an electric current, the Prophet became a messenger of Allah. It was this mission that 
distinguished him from all other prophets and messengers that humankind has uh, humankind had seen before. We learned that prophets and messengers who preceded Muhammad had been equipped with special gifts of miraculous power that they possessed independently from the message they carried to the people. Muhammad's mission as a prophet and messenger in contract was solely authorized by Allah order to deliver the text of the divine revelation exactly as he heard it. It is because of this mission that Allah asked the Muslim believers to be obedient to Muhammad as messenger, Rasul, not as prophet, Nabi, or human being, Al-Bashar Al-Insan. Why? Because obedience requires the impeccability of the one whom, they, whom we obey. And Muhammad was not in any way impeccable either as a human being or as prophet, only as messenger within the boundaries that the book stipulates. Numerous passages in the book could be quoted to illustrate this truth. As for the thorny problem of how to correctly follow Muhammad's sunnah, we will conclude that we should emulate not his rules as such, but the manner in which he harmonized with the book the becoming and progressing of his society on the Arabian Peninsula in the 7th century. In other words, we should follow his model and also apply the divine rules, but this time within the political historical context of our own time. He presents to us the first and most, most authentic model of how to transform the being of and in itself of the book into concrete realities of social society state family and so and such a model ishtihad which we have to emulate for our own times the 21st century this insight allows us to conclude that muhammad was a pragmatic leader who received the absolute and applied it to the particular of his time as we have seen he was certainly a wise man, but as we have also seen, the wisdom of his sunnah was not derived from a divine source. This implies that our philosophical and theological knowledge, which should be anchored in divine knowledge, can only be derived from the book alone. It cannot come from the words and statements of Muhammad, even if he was God's most perfect messenger. Only Allah alone not his messenger should be the ultimate source of knowledge nor shall the words of his companions and contemporaries be the inspiration for contemporary thought finally let us assure the followers that we are committed to following the sunnah of the prophet but only to the extent and degree we we define in this series we are indeed willing to emulate the example of Muhammad but only within the parameters of a new Islamic jurisprudence that we propose in this volume human history of a human history we will continue in the next part thank you for following part 11 and we'd like to hear your thoughts and part 12 from the Sunnah of the Prophet will follow and thank you